Today let's discuss platelet plug inhibition by endothelial cells. Inside platelets, increased calcium acts as a second messenger to cause exocytosis of platelet granules and platelet activation. Activated platelets have increased surface area and express active fibrinogen receptors. This makes the platelets stick to one another. In case of a wound, this allows the platelets to form a platelet plug to help stop blood flow. But how does your body prevent clots when there is no wound? Doing so is important because spontaneous clot formation is very painful and can be lethal. Clot formation is primarily prevented by an active inhibition of platelets and the most important cell type to inhibit platelet activation are endothelial cells. Healthy, intact endothelial cells block spontaneous platelet activation using three primary mechanisms. All three of these mechanisms share a common goal, reduce calcium levels within the platelet. When intracellular calcium levels are kept low, platelets are maintained in an inactive state and don't stick to one another. The first approach used by endothelial cells to inhibit platelet activation is the production of nitric oxide, abbreviated NO, by the enzyme nitric oxide synthase. Secreted NO enters the platelets where it activates the enzyme guanylate cyclase, which then stimulates the formation of cyclic GMP from GTP. Cyclic GMP then activates protein kinase G, which blocks the function of phospholipase C. In the absence of NO, phospholipase C cleaves the membrane phospholipid PIP2, which leads to the production of inositol triphosphate, or IP3. IP3 then binds to and opens calcium channels on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum, causing calcium to flood the cell. And remember, intracellular calcium causes exocytosis and granule release. Thus, by inhibiting phospholipase, calcium release from the ER is inhibited by nitric oxide and granule release is inhibited. A second mechanism utilized by endothelial cells to inhibit platelet activation is the production and secretion of a signaling molecule called prostacyclin, abbreviated PGI2. Prostacyclin is the ligand for a G protein coupled receptor on the surface of the platelet. Activation of this GPCR by prostacyclin leads to the production of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP then activates a calcium pump on the surface of the platelet, which actively pumps calcium out of the platelet. Thus, increased calcium efflux reduces calcium within the platelets, which inhibits granule release. Third, endothelial cells express an ADPase called CD39 on the surface of the cell. CD39 metabolizes ADP to AMP. ADP is a potent platelet activator and works by binding to ADP or P2Y12 receptors on the surface of the platelet. Activation of P2Y12 receptors directly inhibits the effects of prostacyclin just described. As such, P2Y12 activation causes calcium to build up inside the cell, resulting in granule release. The endothelial ADPA CD39 inhibits P2Y12 receptor activation by eliminating its ligand, ADP. CD39 breaks down ADP into AMP, which is further broken down to adenosine, abbreviated ADO by the enzyme CD73. Adenosine then binds to adenosine receptors or A2AR receptors on endothelial cells to further increase the release of nitric oxide. Adenosine also binds to A2AR receptors on platelets to further inhibit platelet function by increasing levels of cyclic AMP. To summarize, three mechanisms that lower calcium employed by endothelial cells act to inhibit platelet activation. First, endothelial cells produce nitric oxide that leads to the inactivation of phospholipase C. 
Second, endothelial cells produce prostacyclin, which leads to the platelet pumping calcium out of the cell. And third, the ADPA CD39 degrades ADP. Following injury, these inhibitory mechanisms are overcome, resulting in platelet granule release and the initiation of platelet plug formation to help stop bleeding. It is also interesting to note that one of the most potent stimulators to increase endothelial cell production of nitric oxide, ADPase, and prostacyclin is an important protein from the coagulation cascade called thrombin. Try to appreciate how thrombin becomes an integral part of a negative feedback loop that can help regulate the positive feedback initiated during clotting. Now for some questions to assess your understanding. Pause the video now and contemplate your answers. If you answered the following, you are correct. And a few more questions. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.